Hello everybody, it's Friday, for, 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 for Friday. Um, we are back in the little house, it's a little bit windy today, so we've um, we've, we've come in here. Because um, it would be blowing all over the shop. Um, so it's Friday, we are back tomorrow for picture books and a whole bunch of, it's a big, it's a big ladybird herd day tomorrow. We've got all of the ladybird herds. So like if you're, if you if you're not into the ladybird herd stories then don't then bother, don't the bother tomorrow we've bird. done the, the the standard what the ladybird heard but we've got There's what, what the ladybird, ladybird heard, heard next what the ladybird heard at the seaside what the ladybird heard on holiday um, i don't think i've read it seaside and we're also then. throwing in the um cranes at christmas as well oh. So it's a bit of a bu it's a bit of a bumper one tomorrow, but only if you only if mainly you like. mainly from like it's kind of like you have to watch the other ones to understand probably. Yes, yeah. Especially with the crayons. Oh, the crayons one, you, I think you definitely need to, but not necessarily. They're they're kind of these in the, ones are fine. You get the you get the right. Well, I don't know which order they're meant to be in. That one, and I can't remember which. I think, I think, I think it's, it's holiday. holiday I think it's holiday. Seaside, then seaside. I think seaside's new. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Right. Anyway, we are back here with uh, that. Yeah, you missed out yesterday because it yeah. was the yesterday was the second part of a two-parter uh, where, where the cat the the cat on Wednesday uh -huh. the cat was on the chair and it had flown uh, yeah. off and whatever and it had been caught by a witch who's something like Kiri Kiri or something like that. Yeah, um, is that right? Uh, but they had to go and rescue the cat yesterday, uh, but they've successfully rescued the cat and returned home. So this is a whole new adventure called The Disappearing Island. So if I take over that, okay. you're dressed as John McLean from Die Hard today. Yeah, I'm not sure whether that's deliberate, probably isn't, but one for grown-ups there. Um, right, The Disappearing Island. It happened once that the children in Chinky had a most unpleasant adventure, and it was all Molly's fault. The wishing chair grew its wings one bright sunny morning, just as the three of them were planning a great game of pirates. Molly saw the red wings growing from the legs of the chair and cried out in delight. Look, the chair's off again. Let's get in and have an adventure. They all crowded into it, and in a trice, the chair was off through the door and into the air. It was such fun, for the day was clear and sunny, and the children could see for miles. The chair flew on and on and came to the towers and spires of Fairyland. They glittered in the sun, and, Pete, and Peter wanted to go down and visit the prince and princess they had once rescued. But the chair still flew on. It flew over the land of gnomes and over the land of toadstools and at last came to a bright blue sea. Hello, hello, said Kinky, peering over the edge of the chair. I've never been as far as this before. I don't know if we ought to fly over the sea. The chair might get tired and then what would happen to us if we, it, if we all came down in the sea? We shan't do that, said Molly, pointing to a blue island for far away on the horizon. I think the chair is making for the land over there. The chair flew steadily towards it, and the children saw that the land they, they had seen in the distance was a small and beautiful island. It was packed with flowers, and the sound of bells came faintly up from the fields and hills. We mustn't go there, said Kinky suddenly. That's disappearing island. Well, why shouldn't we go there, said Molly. Because it suddenly disappears, said Kinky. I've heard of it before. It's a horrid place. You get there and think it's all beautiful as, it, as can be, and then it suddenly disappears and takes you with it. It can't be horrid, said Molly longingly, looking down at the sunny flower, flower spread island. Oh, Chinky, you must be mistaken. It is the most beautiful island I've ever saw. I do want to go. There are some lovely birds there too. I can, I can hear them singing. I tell you, Molly, it's dangerous to go to the disappearing island, said Chinky crossly. You might believe me. You're not always right, said Molly obstinately. I want to go there. Wishing chair, fly down to that lovely island. At once, the chair be began to fly downwards. Chinky glared at Molly, but the words were said. He couldn't unsay them. Down they flew, and down and down. The brilliant island came nearer and nearer. Molly shouted in delight to see such glorious bright flowers, such shiny winged birds, such plump soft rabbits. The chair flew swiftly towards, swiftly towards them, and then, just as they were about to land in a field of spread with buttercups as large as poppies, among soft-eyed bunnies and singing birds, a most strange and peculiar thing happened. The island disappeared. One moment it was there, and the sun, 
and the sun was shining on its fields, and the next moment there was only a faint blue mist. The chair flew through the mist and then splash, they were all in the sea. Molly and Peter were flung off to the off the chair into the water. Kiki grabbed the back of the chair and reached his hand out for the children. They clambered back onto the chair, which was bobbing about on the waves, soaking wet. What did I tell you? said Kinky angrily. Didn't I say it was Disappearing Island? Now see what happened. It's gone and disappeared and we've all fallen into the sea. A nice pickle we are in, all wet and shivery, just like a girl to get us into this mess. Molly went red. How she wished she hadn't wanted to go to the dis Disappearing Island. Well, I didn't know it was going to disappear so suddenly, she says. I'm very sorry. Not much good being sorry, said P Peter gloomily, squeezing the water out of his clothes. How are we going to get to, the, to land? As far as I can see, there is water all around us for miles. The chair's wings are wet and it can't fly. The three of them were indeed in a dreadful fix. It was fortunate for them that the chair was made of wood, or they would not have had anything to cling to. They bobbed up and down for, the, some, for some time, wondering what to do. Suddenly, to their greatest surprise, a little head popped out of the sea. Hello, it said. Are you wanting help? Yes, said Chinky. Are you a merman? I am, said the little fellow. The children looked down at him, and through the green water they could see his fish-like body covered with scales from the waist downwards and ending in a silvery tail. Do you want to be towed in, to land? Yes, please, said Chinky, joyfully. That will cost you a piece of gold, said the merman. I haven't any with me, but we, we will send it to you as soon as we get home, promised Kinky. The merman swam off and came back riding on big fi a, bi a big fish. He threw a rope of seaweed around the back of the chair and shouted to Kinky to hold on to it. The fish set off at a great speed, towing the chair behind it with Kinky and the ch ch children safely on it. The merman rode on the fish all the way, singing a funny little watery song. It was a strange ride. Soon they came to the land and the children dragged the chair out of the water on the sun baked sand. Thank you, they said to the merman. We will send you the money as soon as we can. The merman jumped on the fish again, waved his wet hand and dived into the wave with a splash. We'll wait till the sun has dried the chair's wings and we'll dry our own clothes, said Chinky. Then we'll go home. I think that was the most unpleasant adventure. We might have to have been bobbing about for days on the sea. Molly didn't say anything. She knew it was all her fault. They dried their clothes and as soon as the wings of the chair were quite dry too, they sat in it and Chinky cried, Home, wishing chair, home. They flew home. Molly jumped off the chair as soon as it arrived in the playroom and ran to her money box. She tipped out all of her money. Here you are, Chinky, she said. I'm going to pay for that fish fry myself. It was all my fault. I'm very sorry and I won't be silly, so silly again. Do forgive me. Oh, that's very nice of you, Molly, said Chinky as he gave her a hug. Of course we forgive you. All's well and all's well that ends well. We're home again, safe and sad. He changed Molly's money into a big gold piece and gave it to the blackbird in the garden, asking him to take it to the mermaid. Man, that's the end of that adventure, said Chinky. Well, let's hope our next one will be much, much nicer. And let's hope it is. Looks like it's full of butterflies there. I and the next it, one is called The Magician's Party. I found it funny how um, they said, with much a surprise, um, it disappeared. Well, <laughs> mm. it isn't with much well, of a it's, surprise. Well, not really. If it's called The Disappearing <laughs> Island, it's <laughs> Plus, a, a yes. clue in the And Chinky's already the told them as well Absolutely. that it's going to disappear. What I didn't get, there was a kind of bit early on in the chapter. It says that the chair flew on and on and came to the towers and spires of Fairyland. They glittered in the sun and Peter wanted to go down and visit the prince and princess they had once rescued. I, I don't, don't, remember, I don't that. remember that. Me neither. That's obviously a story that's kind of, unless anyone else can remember it, but I'm pretty sure I can't remember a prince and princess that have been rescued in Fairyland. This is definitely the first book. Yeah. <laughs> How very odd. Anyway, anyway, we've obviously kind of like... I, I, th I, thought they, I thought that they just might have had adventures, just not on... Maybe that maybe it's a bit like... Because that's kind of, quite often in like films and stuff, they're like... Yeah, they things that they, they say that there's like off camera and stuff. Yeah, like, and certainly that, that occasionally happens in one of my favourite things, Doctor Who. They quite often mention things that have happened. I'll remember when we went to such and such a moon or something like that. And, yeah. yeah. Right, let us TTFN. Like we say, we'll, me and Molly are back tomorrow for uh, Ladybird stories and Crayon stories. Um, 
but I think that's and then Sunday looking at that pile of books over there rabbit and, ra <laughs> I've only just noticed we have so many yeah, books rabbit, the rabbit and hedgehog is there I want to do another rabbit and hedgehog so I'll persuade her to do a rabbit and hedgehog on Sunday plus we'll have a kind of like a couple of others I like how we can just decide hmm what should we read today exactly yeah Cool. Right. Let us. I need some lunch because I'm yeah, back on too. on a call soon, and you need some lunch as well. So, say uh, as you're dressed like John McLean, rather than say T F N, say Yippee Kaye. Yippee Kaye. Okay. Right. Bye. 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 T F N.